Hello everyone, I'm Chris Ericlee and welcome to your Wednesday edition of the P.E. Crime Blotter. The Press Enterprise has spoken with two Riverside police detectives who were in Big Bear the day of the shootout with Christopher Dorner. They actually exchanged gunfire with Dorner during that shootout on Glass Road. I'm joined now by Press Enterprise's Alicia Robinson. Alicia, you had the chance to sit down with them today. Just talk about, obviously they were up there as part of the manhunt and, and little did they know that they'd end up being a, bi a big part of this uh, big shootout. Right. Uh, it's uh, detectives um, Mike Medici and Jim Simons, and they've be each been with the force for almost two decades in Riverside. And uh, they told me about a kind of a harrowing uh, experience that they had while they were up on the mountain. They had been sent up there on Monday, which was the day before the shootout, to kind of assist uh, San Bernardino Sheriff's Department and some of the other law enforcement agencies that were up there, you know, just finding out what had been learned so they could report back to their own agencies and also help in any way that they might be needed, you know, maybe searching any cabins that had not been searched so far. So they were up there uh, overnight Monday and then Tuesday after a briefing, the detectives were listening to scanner traffic when they heard the call about the couple who Dorner had tied up and stolen their car. And so they basically started tracking um, scanner traffic of where the vehicle had been spotted and which way he was heading. And apparently Simon, Detective Simons knows those, the mountains very well. He has hunted up there a lot over the years. And so he basically knew there were only a few ways out. And they kind of made um, some assumptions as to which way that he might be going and that Dorner was probably not going to try to get down uh, by going through the city of Big Bear and Big Bear Lake where there were a whole bunch of people around and, and he'd be more likely to be spotted. So they basically followed the scanner traffic and came across um, where he shot, uh, exchanged fire with a fish and game officer. Uh, they kept going. They found the crashed, uh, the vehicle that he had stolen crashed. Then they heard that he had, had carjacked someone and was in a different vehicle, and they were following that one. So after the detectives uh, passed the stolen vehicle that Dorner had apparently crashed and then abandoned, uh, they're driving around with you know, holding their guns out the window, trying to look for him and see if he's somewhere hiding in the woods. Uh, then they heard, you know, that he'd taken, uh, he'd carjacked someone and taken a different truck, and they were following those reports when, uh, they, and they were headed towards uh, the direction of the cabin where he ultimately was barricaded. And over the radio, they actually heard the gunshots uh, that hit um, the sheriff's detective, Jeremiah McKay, who later died of his injuries. So they arrived at the cabin just after a uh, San Bernardino sheriff's sergeant had arrived with some members of his SWAT team. So they helped kind of provide backup and provide cover. And when um, the sheriff's deputies were throwing in smoke canisters to kind of obscure the scene so they could get the injured uh, deputy to safety, uh, officer or detectives uh, Medici and Simons helped provide fire, lay down some fire as a cover to keep Dorner from firing on an officer going in to get the wounded deputy. So it was a very uh, disturbing kind of experience. How did they describe, you know, thinking back, uh, you know, about a week later now, uh, reflecting on their experience? Well, they both said that they, at the time, they all they were thinking about was listening to the, you know, the commands of the officers around them, listening to the gunfire and kind of ma making, just focusing on decisions about what to do next and how they could help. But afterwards, um, actually, and when the cabin f finally actually caught fire and uh, there was reportedly a single gunshot that some uh, officers heard that they believe was Dorner taking his own life, at that point, the Riverside detectives had been remo had removed to another command post because they'd been relieved by other um, uh, fresh officers that had come in, but they basically said even before it was officially confirmed, they knew that it was Dorner in there and they knew that he, that he had been killed and there was a sense of relief because that happened on Tuesday. Wednesday was the day of the funeral for uh, their colleague, Officer Michael Crane, who had been killed by Dorner in Riverside in an ambush. So I think they were glad that um, they were not going to continue to have to worry about him being at large while they were trying to focus on honoring uh, you know, their colleague who'd been killed. And obviously they were very upset about uh, that another law enforcement officer had died, but I think they were glad that the whole thing was over. All right, Alicia, thanks for joining us. That does it for your Wednesday edition of the PE Crime Blotter. Be sure to stay tuned right here on PE.com for the latest on this story.